Welcome, Spikelings, to the Shark Typhoon. Got a really interesting list for y'all today. There, this is mostly a like mono blue affinity deck using Agatha Soul Cauldron to turn your stuff into Urzas and Spellskites and Emery's and Walking Ballistas and Ronas. But there is a pretty convoluted infinite combo here. Uh, we, we got this tech from a opponent in the league like a couple weeks ago. They were playing a blue red breach um blue red breach combo deck with rona and the and the idea was that you can if you have a rona in play and if you turn rona into an emery things things get kind of crazy where you're able to cast stuff from the graveyard cast a legendary spell and then untap your rona and keep and keep doing it um and then if you have if you've turned your rona into an emery you have access to two mox ambers you have access to infinite mana and if you have access to infinite mana, there's a lot of ways to win the game, including Walking Ballista, turning any creature into Walking Ballista with Agatha Soul Cauldron also wins the game because you could just sink infinite mana to put infinite counters on a creature. If you have, uh, if you have, um, if you have a uh, Urza, you can just like you know activate Urza for your entire library too. So this is kind of like a backdoor, backdoor combo closeout game. Sometimes you'll be able to get lucky and. Um, do it very quickly, but this is mostly this is mostly going to be a value deck. This is going to be a deck that is um, trying to put fast urges into play, giant constructs, trying to get a ton of value with Agatha Soul Cauldron, and and like using a lot of card selection too with your Imri's Ronas and Ledger Shredder. Ledger Shredder is a I think a very exciting card to pair with Agatha Soul Cauldron, where you have like we have a lot of zero drops. So you're going to be conniving a lot. You're putting a ton of plus one counters on it, so you're you know if you have Cauldron in play, you can give something else and keep Ledger Shredder with the activated ability. And then is uh, I, I, in my playtesting so far, like turning Ledger Shredder into a walking ballista has been really, really cool to turn, to turn this into a ballista. Like there's been a couple times where I've had like four counters already by the time I, I get it going. And then it's just, it's just so insurmountable for, for your opponents. Um, one, one thing I'm like really excited for in this build too, is that, um, in these like in these like kind of mono blue affinity style decks, it does feel like Ornithopter is a card that's super important to play. It gives you like a density of cheap spells for Emery, cheap spells for Ledger Shredder, uh, makes your constructs big. But in this deck, because you have Agatha Soul Cauldron, your Ornithopters are like very real cards because you're you're going to be turning this into an Urza. You're going to be turning it into an Emery too. Um, I also really like that Emery allows you to like dig really deep for Agatha Soul Cauldron. Um, replay it from the graveyard i think that that's very exciting you have a lot of card selection so like drawing drawing and finding a carlton is really nice we also have a lot of looting in this deck so there's so like there's less of a problem playing four copies of the cauldron since we have rona and ledger shredder to loot you can just kind of loot extra copies away a in addition uh urza is a card that can be kind of clunky it's four mana it's it's kind of hard to um it's kind of hard to cast some of the time, but this is also a deck that likes to loot Urza away so you can cauldron it later. And so, like, in this way, playing Urza becomes better because, like, you, you'll be happy casting it at the mid to late game and you'll be happy to loot it away early. Um, this is also a very good um, Manamo deck. We're playing actually two Manamos. You can untap your Imri's and you can untap your Agatha Soul Cauldrons and your Ronas for a good amount of value. I think that the upside here is worth playing two copies despite them being legendary i think we get to we get to play caves um i'm really excited about this deck it was it was good in my playtesting last night i was impressed by it um still figuring out like a lot of the lines and sequencing i think we've got a good first draft here so let's uh let's get going would we consider thought monitor for the draw but also cast off emery uh well, you could consider it i think i think we're not um like we don't have any artifact lands our, oh, I forgot to mention one, one very important thing. This is also tech we got from, from that opponent. If anybody can remember who that opponent was, also that we played in the league with the Breach deck, I'd love to give him a shout-out. I tried digging for a little bit. I couldn't remember what deck I was playing. I couldn't remember what it was. Um, St Stone of Reach is also... Um, this is when you have your Rona Emery loop going, where you've turned this into an Emery and you're making infinite mana with your members. Um, this is a legendary card draw spell It's a uh, that you can... Um, Cast with Rona, untap the Rona, and just you get to draw your entire library with this too. And it's also tutorable with Urza Saga, um, while also being you know mostly like a, a Nile spell bomb plus one extra mana with a like with extra utility against opponent scam decks too. Um, it's also really nice that this card is not symmetrical, so your own stuff doesn't get exiled when it dies, which is you know relevant in your Soul Cauldron deck. So this is, this is like pretty cool tech here too, and not not just a value card, not just a good card against scam, but actually also a, a combo piece. Uh, Glittering Caves is uh, Gemstone Caverns. 
Thank you, Gilligan, with the 25 months. Hope you're doing well today. Thank you, back. welcome back. Ryo. I mean, I I have liked Ryo and the Pilly doing a lot. <laughs> we even don't have to do we even don't have to run the risk of drawing our second caverns. We got two cantrips. But you said Urza wasn't modern playable. I sure do say that about a lot of cards I play. <laughs> from time to time, good to see Archmage. I don't know. It's it's better with Cauldron for sure. Marsh Flats Temple Garden. Could be like Green White Hammer. Mm. Sam combo, maybe? Wow, Rona is an incredible top deck here. Let's take a peek at their deck. Heliod, okay. Well, I was kind of hoping it was Sam combo and this stone would be like <laughs> crazy main deck hate. I'm gonna hold that Ornithopter to loot away, though. Pretty, pretty good turn one. Pretty good game one, turn one. <laughs> Rona plus stone. Nath with the nine months. Thank you. Does Cauldron give Urza mana ability if you use an Urza? Yeah, it gives, it gives the mana ability and the like unexpected results ability. Without Shredder, you can play with Zerda. No, everyone thinks you can play Zerda in these stupid decks, but like you can't play Zerda in Urza Saga in the same deck. It's so sad. It's so sad. Okay, Ballista can do some work at uh, stopping them from being able to combo. Let's see what we draw. Let's see what we draw for Rona also. Okay. Um, let's just discard Ornithopter. Uh, could be fine to keep the Ornithopter. I'm going to, on turn two, play a 2-2 two -two Ballista though. Zosh with the, the Twitch Prime. Thank you. Thank you. When concerned is Pithy Needle and Rona, any consideration flame nor decide? I don't I'm not I don't really care about splash like not not being able to combo because my opponent has Pithy Needle. This deck has access to an infinite combo, which is very nice. Um and like it is it is something we're gonna do, I think. But it, it this is not like the, it's not the deck's plan A. This is a like mono blue like value mid mid-range affinity shell that we played in the fast that has access to this like relatively incidental infinite combo. Another Ballista. It's an interesting draw. It'd be nice to find a Cauldron. Another Saga. So let's discard Island here. And I think I'm going to just play a 1-1 one, one Ballista and make a Construct. Like, like you see like how crazy this starts been. We went, you know, turn 1 Rona, <laughs> Ballista, uh, make Urza Saga activation. Like, we don't, we, we're not, we're okay if they need us. We'll just combo kill them. Or we'll just, you know, outvalue them. Wait, Kings of the Two Months, thank you. Did you flip Rona in playtesting? I did not flip Rona in playtesting. It's certainly, it's certainly on my radar. I even, like, for a little while was considering... Oh, I, I kind of... I, I also probably should have said that this is, like... This is, like, where I ended up after trying to work on the, like... Um, oh, sorry, I need, to, I need to let them target with Heliod here. This is where I ended up after working on the... Um charge counter kiki idea the 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 aether vial kiki deck it's it was like a long process we may still play we may still play a corridor monitor kiki combo but this is kind of where i ended up after that um but i was considering playing rona and one copy of Emrakul in our deck because you could flip rona ping it with walking blister then cast Emrakul. i ended up i ended up kind of thinking that that was not actually going to be that that important okay so they're putting the counter on the Halfling. I need to decide, is it correct for me to kill this Arbor Elf now? I think no. I think I think I just need to save these to interact with the opponent's combo here. What is Stone? I, I, stone is a legendary uh, card draw engine, so when you have your ro when you turn your Rona into an Emery, and you've made a ton of mana with your Mox Embers, you can draw your deck with this. It's also like it's also like scam hate. It's also like living in hate. It's like a good Urza Saga target while addition to being a combo piece. Yeah, what kings are the two? Thank you, thank you. What are the cards you're considering? I, I don't know. These kind of questions I think are not really that good to ask. What other cards were you considering? Like, I've spent like two. I've I've spent like two days and like a combination of like five or six hours working on the stack. It's just I don't know. There's it, it's gone through like many different versions that look nothing like this. It's 
too complicated, I think. Did they get another Oxus Pass? No, I was so excited about this deck. I bought a lot of promos for it today. <laughs> I was so excited about it. Also, sometimes, like, when I have, like, whenever... I, when I play, like, a convoluted deck like this off stream or on stream, having, like, the cool promos, it just sometimes helps me focus on it a bit more. Pure Bane, 11 months. Thank you. Plane Shift, 14. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, you could also Lex that Gimmerkle on Urza. I, I, I actually at one point had a build that was playing, I was playing Core Tapper and Everflowing Chalice, Astral Cornucopia, uh, Power Conduit, and the idea was that you could do all of those things. Okay, so this is a 2-2 two -two Ballista. Interesting. You could do, you could do all that. Um, well, uh, okay, and then they get to... So I probably have to just kill this Ballista now, right? Seems fine. They can't kill anything in response. Um, what am I saying? <laughs> oh, so 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 and so like in addition to your uh, in addition to your um, Astro Cornucopia Ever Flowing Chalice game plan, you could just turn all your creatures uh, creatures into Urza with Cauldron and sp and spin spin your creatures with the with the Cornucopia Chalice mana into Emrakul eventually. I had a build that was like that. Um, I ended up feeling like it was like significantly worse looking than this one. I didn't play any games with it, but um, still, still maybe can mess around with it a little bit. Okay, so they've only have one card in their hand. Oh, good, good to hear. Cody's not actually bugged. We're all all breathing a sigh of relief for you. <laughs> yeah, we're on. Okay, uh, seems like I should be just floating a mana here, casting Urza, can make another Saga token. Probably getting my Aether Spell Bomb. Suppose we'll loot, but this is mostly like, oh, oh, uh, huh. Well, I could just turn my stuff into an Urza. It might still be better to cast the Urza, though. I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I could also, um, I could also turn my stuff into a Ballista. I suppose I don't really need to do anything right now. Pakachu, 12 months, happy anniversary. Been seeing culture bills the Overseer. Overseer sucks, don't, don't, don't even think about it. Don't even think about, hmm, maybe I'll steal Overseer. Don't do it. It is a trap. They're cracking their fetch. Kind of bad news. It probably means they have a blister, Coco. Like, like, oh, Spike. What would a Steel Overseer Cauldron deck like look like? Hmm, maybe like an artifact creature deck that puts plus one counters on things, and then eventually you just build the Hardened Scales deck and you cut the Steel Overseers. That's just that's just the inevitable path you're walking down, and it's a path I can't follow, chap. What the fuck is this attack? I think they're trying to tap me out of my Aether Spell Bomb activation. I I did say I did see Dax Naya Bean list. I I didn't really get it if I'm gonna be honest. But also, if we put this, they can't Skyclave my construct because it's non token. So, okay, so now I can make a token and still have Aether Spell Bomb activation up. I think they're I guess they're just gonna like Life Link with Heliod. Yeah, I do. I do like hardened scales, but what I what I'm saying is I don't like to register uh, register steel overseer and hardened scales. Yeah, I, I like I like Zach Spruce a lot. Um, sorry, Zach, <laughs> Dax Spruce a lot, and uh, I like the um, Soul Flare deck. That deck was cool for sure. So I think they're going to be dead here. I suppose I should probably just bell bomb this now. Okay, so bounce this. I guess they could have solitude, but barring that, we should be winning here. I guess we'll just take Bobble. Okay. 
there. Cool. And it's also kind of cool when you have, like, when you have Urza and Walking Ballista, then you can spend, like, your Urza mana sinking into Walking Ballista sometimes. Yeah, this deck is really sick. I, I, I woke up a little groggy, and then I remembered I built this deck, and I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. I was very excited. So we're gonna bring a triple Pithing Needle. Um, spell Skype probably not super, super important in this matchup. Could keep it like one. Also, I don't think I mentioned this in deck tech, but the fact that Emery fills your yard for Cauldron and is a good card to Cauldron too is nice. The combo is, yeah, the combo, Emery's ability on Rona plus double Box Amber. Um, and I think with like, the, and it's a lot of cards, with the amount of cards you see with all your loots and stuff, it's actually like pretty realistic. Okay, let's keep this. You can go turn two Shredder, Ornithopter, loot away Urza, then Cauldron, Cauldron onto Cauldron the Urza, which is kind of slow. Does the spell guide stop the Ballista combo? No, it, it does not stop the Ballista. Oh, it's, oh, it, can Helia? Oh yeah, you could redirect the Heliod. Okay, yeah, maybe it, maybe maybe the spell guide's better. Right, right, right. Maybe for game three. What makes this a triple gemstone cavern deck as opposed to any as opposed to any other deck? <laughs> um, I mean, like maybe we could compare it to Hardened Scales, which is another deck that I play triple gemstone caverns in. Um, I like gemstone caverns a lot when you are playing a deck that is an Urza Saga deck. That's like like the like there's you're just gonna have so many hands that put caverns and Saga to play turn one. Then you're making then you're playing a two drop, making a construct on turn two. I usually like that. I like gemstone caverns a deck with a lot of two drops, like Hardened Scales. This deck has a ton of two drops. The deck is also mono colored, um, so like having that colorless mana is just not as big a deal either. So these are all um, pieces of the formula that make me want to play a lot of gemstone caverns. I think we still go for the Shredder plan. Could see. I think I think it's a bit better than Emery. Although we maybe uh, we maybe uh, Cauldron Ballista instead. But again, this this is something I've been really excited about is the the um, turning your Ledger Shredder into a Walking Ballista <laughs> has, has been really really dang good. When is Recom on the board? I mostly went against Scam Merktide Hammer. Um, I'm still kind of. I, I wanted access to sub number in the 75 and kind of like flesh out that game plan. Okay, so they take the turn to Skyclave. So this turn we can go Cauldron, Urza the Ornithopter into a two drop. I guess now Aether Spellbob into two drop. <laughs> Ornithopter Ascended. <laughs> <laughs> do you have endurance? Yeah, Ornithopter Ascended. Let's go. <laughs> I need, I'm going to screenshot this a little bit. Or maybe I could get more activated abilities. No, let's... Sorry, I just need to take a moment. Yeah, I'm just going to kill their Ballista, I think. Take the screenshot, don't tweet yet. I couldn't, I couldn't resist myself, but I can just, like, retweet it with more, more and more abilities, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to... Turn it into a ballista too. Also exile their ballista. Maybe we'll cast just cast a copy of Urza first. Just play our hand here. Okay, they're pretty clearly F6. Probably good to spread the counters around. Leave this up for Aether Spell Bomb. Well, I guess I am just gonna also kill their Arbor Elf. Could have left up this for Aether Spell Bomb, so I still could have cracked it end of turn. Seems like it's all gonna be fine. The Fairy's Pigeon with the seven, Jeff with the ten. Thank you, thank you. I I woke up so excited to play this deck today, y'all.
<laughs> Just look at that. It's so beautiful. Could give it the Arbor Elf ability too. So let's loot that away. We could combo here potentially if we get really lucky. So we did mill over a Mox Amber, so let me go... Let me like look at my top card, I guess. Island. Oh, we milled over two Mox Ambers! Holy... Where, where did that come from? So this is the combo. So now we have infinite mana, and then we just we just have we just already have the ballista too. It's a mil It's gonna be you know too many clicks, but maybe my opponent will concede. Let's fucking go, dude! This deck is so sick. You know, so like I'm, I'm always excited to hop in and stream. Days like today, I'm just like, I'm just like so extra excited. All right, so let me just go ahead and put a counter on the Rona. See if this is going to be something they might like to concede to. It is, it is kind of like dark pool territory. Okay, but they do concede. They, they get the, they get how the combo works. It is kind of, it is kind of dark pool level clicks. <laughs> but who cares? Did I try rigging this build? I, I have two in the sideboard. Um, I considered main decking them. I ended up thinking that they were like a lot of non-creatures high on the mana curve we already want to play for urza we don't have good ways to untap it we can loop it with emery so like the, the, the nice thing is like being able to loop it with emery i i had a build that was i had a build that was more focused on like charge counters core tapper turning your stuff into core tappers um turning your stuff into core tappers astro cornucopia uh, ever flowing chalice um and then turning your stuff into urzas and spinning into emrakul and then we i, I had four rings in that build um, may, may still play that build at some point, but. Does Cauldron make Yogg a better deck or a different one? Both, I guess. I mean, it's different and it's better. It's, you know, you, you, add, a, you add a single card, this deck's different, I guess. Let's keep here. So probably up against four color. I did a pretty interesting match against four color last night. Emery would be a great draw. Not quite so lucky. Might have been you the four color play last night. Oh, if you played against me, it was you. I don't, I don't know. These basic swing for me. Um, so I, I I bought a bunch of promos for the deck, um, and then I was kind of just looking for basics that I felt like fit the general vibe, and I, I felt like these fit pretty well. I don't I don't usually like to rank. Well, they only they don't have red and six. That's great. I don't usually like to rank, but I like to just see how they make me feel. Okay, pretty good turn. We are out of cards. We can uh, be Urzing or Ballista if we if they kill my Urza. It's a mana sinks at least. Mouth day sixteen. No, they they revealed Kihira, so they don't have Charlotte's Agent, so they're not Rhinos. So we know they have Fury. Pitch another copy of Fire Eyes. Interesting. So if they kill Urza, you know, Soul Cauldron will become a really nice top deck. Not that it wasn't already pretty good, I guess. But Gristlebrand, yeah, we, we, we've, uh, we've Cauldron Gristlebranded a little bit. It was definitely okay. 
Worst case scenario, we just put a counter on Ballista and get in. This was certainly my worst top deck but by a lot. It's okay, I guess. Doesn't seem like they have a binding or solitude, so I would I would take that then not having one of those over me drawing a good card here if I could choose something like that. Mox Opal. I decided to not play Mox Opal in this deck. I wanted to play Mox Amber instead because they were the ones I owned. Yeah, this co wait, no, sorry, I, I, because this combos with Rona, of course. That's the real answer. So if they don't have a zero mana answer for Ballista, we get to put them to like effectively one, which is pretty good against the deck with infinite fetch lands. They also don't have another land in their hand. Um, okay. So if I cast Urza, can I also put a counter on Ballista? I can, but it would require me tapping Ballista, which doesn't seem great. Yeah, Mox is not legal. That is the joke. Joke identified. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to... Oh, it's, it is really close, I think. There's a really big difference between them being at 3 and being at 4. Yeah, I'm being at 3 and at 3 and 1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to just put them to 1 here. Or, like, effectively 1. Makes, like, ring, like, so much worse, too. They could definitely have a ring in their hand, but they don't have a fourth land. They look at Metallic Mimic, Cauldron, Exile, Grist, Infinite Mill. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, every time you try to brew a Cauldron deck with Grist, I've tried to brew a lot of Cauldron decks with Grist recently. I had one with, like, Fulminator and Unearth. It's just worse than Yawgmoth. It, every single time so far for me, it's been, like, significantly worse than, like, a theoretical Yawgmoth deck would be. So, or the, the actual Yawgmoth deck would be. So, that that's kind of the... That's my, my my selling point, is that convince me that but freaking, putting freaking Metallic Mimic in your deck is better than putting Yawgmoth in your deck. Then still one artifact short of spinning. Guess we'll play this out, though. Maybe a Mimic and Yogg. I mean, a Ballista and Yogg is also, like, really crazy, because you can, like, peel the Undying counter off your Young Wolf or, uh, you know, String Geist or whatever. Yeah, yeah, y Yogg, Yogg, a Cauldron is stock in Yogg Moth. It is stock in Yogg. Yeah, it is funny that we, <laughs> Urza is just two lethal attackers here. Let's see the Grim Gully Kiki Cauldron deck? We've, we had, like, one deck tech for that. Um, I, I haven't seen, like, a super hammered out list or anything, but... I'm aware of those decks' presence. Okay, so they find a Solitude. Imagine they go after the Urza. They do go after the Urza. You know, it is nice that we can draw a Cauldron or Ballista and win. Um, interesting that they haven't killed my Construct yet. So I think I'm going to go cast Cauldron. Then attack. Thoughts on Cauldron, Count and Yogg? I, I think... I would probably be playing three. I'm also. I'd also like to play three in scales at the moment. Um, oh, actually, so I, three. I say that I actually kind of just wanted to be jamming four for a little bit because I haven't. I haven't tried it with four, and that cauldron's been so good. But I think the the likely the likely correct number is three, if that makes sense. All right. I think they're dead. Attack with Thopter. Um, kind of fail to see how that would be that relevant, I guess. Like, if I get the counter on it, they're dead, you know what I mean? So I played this matchup last night. I did kind of a trouble sideboarding. We're on the draws, so we're going to bring in the caverns. I, I brought in one needle. Um, and I did, I think I brought in the rings also. I did something like cut an Ornithopter, cut an Aether Spell Bomb, cut a Ballista. I'm not sure that I want to cut the Ballista anymore. I want all the Spell Skites. Can we just trim another Thopter? Let's just try this. I'm not sure that you actually want the rings here, but... I think it kind of makes sense. What's stone for in this matchup? It's just so you can have the infinite combo. You you could you could cut the stone thinking that you're not going to use the combo that often, um, which I guess is actually pretty reasonable. And you get you still do have like you still have the combo, but you just don't have the like infinite draw part off the um, saga as a saga target. 
Yeah, yeah. So the idea behind stone is it's a it's a legendary spell that triggers Rona, and so when you're comboing with Rona Double Amber, it lets you draw your deck. In addition to being you know good against scam and um, asymmetrical, which is nice, but it's it's it, it it fits really well. Yeah. So the so when you have when you turned your Rona into an Emery and you have two Mox Ambers, you make infinite mana, and then because this is legendary, you can just keep casting it from the yard with your Emery Rona, <laughs> Rona, and it, it untaps every time. You just get to draw a card every time. Which isn't tech I figured out. It was we. I, I, if anybody remembers who it was, maybe someone ours already said. But we played against an opponent in league in a league who was playing that that combo in like a breach deck, and it was awesome. It, yeah, it was a league opponent. Uh, I just can't remember who it was. I tried to look for it, but I I just you know couldn't dig it up. It was you parole. Yeah, I think I do think it was you parole. We were just talking about you. This is why I wish I could tag people with. You know, had the, uh, <laughs> had the Emory Rona tech. Yeah, I liked it a lot in your list. Would you play Whirr? Uh, I, I would not. And I am not. Okay, good card to know about. I think the stone wasn't as good as elected, so I cut it because grinding station did the same thing. Yeah, my, my thinking with like playing like this build instead of like your grinding station version is that they don't have a second land. Is that like we we already have the the combo here just and and like we don't have a lot of like two mana non creature do nothings with like breach and um, grinding station. Like breach is maybe calling breach a two drop is a little incorrect, but. Um, I, I like just having, like, being, like, a very proactive threat-focused deck that has, like, this kind of backdoor infinite combo, um, which has been pretty reasonable for me so far. Yeah, 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 Doc, did you do the combo command? Okay, thank you so much, Doc. Why are your four color keep two hand two lands, hands with no lands? I mean, their last hand had lands, they just, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, didn't hit a fourth one. That one's kind of reasonable. This one, th and, and this time they kept on the Strength of Force of Vigor. Was it correct to keep on the Strength of Force of Vigor? I don't know. But, um... That's why. It seems. And did they, do they have a Renin 6? There's no longer a Needle on it. Yep. Like, look, that, now the draw is great. <laughs> So Cauldron can try to um, turn off the Ren and Six for a turn. I could also try to turn my Thopter into a Ballista. I think because I know my opponent doesn't have lands, I'm I'm a little bit more interested in you know exiling their fetch. But if they like kill my if they like pending this before they plus one, I know they have another fetch in their hand. So I'll um, I'll at that point I guess turn this into a Ballista. So yeah, I, I, I guess I, I guess that's to say I think the stone is more reasonable in this build than it is the breach deck. But I hear what you're saying about uh, not wanting to play it in the breach build for sure. Okay, so they have four, three spells in their hand at least. Okay, now they pending. Interesting. So probably just want to slam ring in these kind of spots. I think I don't think drawing a second ring changes that. I guess I wonder if they were trying to not make me put the counter on the Blista here. I guess that might make sense since they're already just going to have more lands anyways. Not really sure. Yeah, we know that Yeah, them having Solitude is another reason to jam the ring, I think. Um, and then maybe try to spell Skype before Urza, although I'm not like that heartbroken if they Solitude the Urza. I still got a Construct and they're like minus two cards. Let's see what their follow up here is. There's a Binding. They also have a Solitude in their hand, and they have they have a Misty. So they, there's one unknown card over there. Might be good to go Urza. Urza Spellskite here. This means, like, if their last card is a white card, they can Solitude this, but then they just have a land. And if they don't, then... We now have the spell skite here protecting the Urza, which is very valuable, I think.
So then Solitude, Misty Rainforest, now two mystery cards. Now they can hard gust the Solitude, but we have Spell Sky in play. Bean. We're dead. They play Flood Strand. So I'm probably gonna start off with Ring Draw card. Let's see. Let's see what what card we draw. I guess we'll I guess we'll play our Mock Sapphire first here. Pro everything. For, for Anviltron, will we take out to put Ring in Spellskite? Uh, I've, I've played Anviltron with Ring. It was actually like a deck I was like somewhat seriously considering for the Pro Tour. Um, you can you can find the list on the Mox Field. So let's try to kill this Ren in six. I'm going to also send the Urza there, so if they somehow can get rid of the construct this is not going to ultimate uh, i've also like put sylvan scrying in the anviltron deck and been a, a really big fan of that strategy or that tech yes yeah, spell skite really i i we, we like this deck is so sweet we've like barely even talked about spell skite <laughs> uh Okay, so Ren and Six down. Um, okay, I'm gonna bobble them in their upkeep, keep the Cauldron activated ability up. Why did the last ability of Planeswalker start being called Ultimates? I don't know, I, I'm not sure what the lore behind that is. Okay, but Sage, you can kill my Cauldron, It'll be okay. Yeah, Spell Scout also works with guys, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. So there's Misty, Besaidu, then two mystery cards. So they must have. When did they, when did they draw this? Because they just drew Besaidu. They didn't cast the second bean last turn. They should have, right? What am I missing? Okay, just main phase this. Sure. Plenty of lands for Besaidu. Off the solitude bean trigger. Oh right, because that was on my turn. Okay. For some reason, I thought they had done that on their turn, but you're right. Ooh, Emery's really nice to fuel the cauldron. <laughs> so is the Rona. Oh! <laughs> Just Emery's and Rona's all the way down, I guess. Okay, I just hit a Ledger Shredder. Um, it could be correct to... Just Emery again. Not really sure what I'm looking for. I guess if I Emery again, I can... Um, yeah, no, if I Emery again, I can turn, like, Ornithopter into an Emery. Oh. At the very least. Okay. And I could cast... I could use Needle here. Um, needle on Besage you seems pretty reasonable, or Ridden Six pick up the besage you I'll name flooded strand if they don't crack the fetch they are cracking the fetch and I could keep up like activate walking blister I think I, I really want to get a Rona in play though let's name uh let's name Renin six why not give Urza a counter too um I mostly want to like incentivize them to kill the Urza the ornithopter not my Urza if that makes sense if they had more, like, non-exile removal, I think that wouldn't be true. But since they have so much exile removal, I want to, like, kind of, like, have two really good targets instead of, like, this just being a much better target at that point. Sodek, thanks for the raid. Hope you're doing well today. Welcome everybody from Sodek's channel. It's a good start for them. We certainly started this turn really ahead. I'm not. Maybe they'll target the ring. Maybe they'll target the Urza. They do target the ring. Then they solitude. My Urza. 
Nothing to do in response, right? Yeah. So I no longer have the Urza around since it's exiled. I could Ballista the Cauldron. We're a little bit, we're a little far away from comboing. Maybe we can flip Rona Ping and cast something in our hand this turn. I'll just, I don't, we don't really have anything I'd like super love to cast, I guess, but we'll see. Are they thinking about using Endurance? They must have Endurance here. I would, I would, I would guess. Solitude and Thopter doesn't accomplish anything as long as it's called That's true, yeah. Okay, let's start off with the loot. Only oh, one more Moxie combo. Um, yeah, but I think they have the, um... Interesting. It, I, it does, it does feel like they have... Endurance for what it's worth. So turning these Shredders into Blisters will be nice. Oh, it's Force of Vigor, okay. Um, so I guess I'm going to replay a Cauldron here. I don't have another Ballista. So I don't, I don't want to exile something with a relevant activated ability since... Since uh, it, it'll be gone once this is gone. Oh, I can also go... Okay, so I get to go... Ping Solitude. Ping Solitude. Target Bobble. And then, do I want to... I think I'll probably just leave the counter on. Instead of pinging again. Okay, so yeah, let's let that happen. <gasps> no, holy shit, we hit Mox Amber. We win. I think. Okay, so... Oh, I don't have another Emery anymore. Damn, I don't have the Emery anymore. Oh, we're so close to winning, though. So I guess if I mill Emery off this, we could win. No, but hitting Spell Sky is definitely really nice. Um, I should probably... Let's see what their top card is. Charmall, which they can't currently cast, but they, if they can draw Red Source, it's four mana, kill this, draw a card. Uh, I'm going to Cauldron Spellskite here. Let's go ahead and put it on uh, the counter on this Shredder, probably. Could have turned Rona into Emery. Um, win, because my because they they killed my Cauldron that had Emery underneath it, right? What am I missing? Oh, I could have killed my own Emery with the Ballista Pings. I guess so. Did I, did I see the second Amber at that point? Maybe I had. This is a hard deck to play for sure. Wait, they do have the second Rad, so they get to go, you know, draw two, destroy land. You know, we, we might not win this game, but I, I will say we, we're like, we're keeping up with this, which is exciting. Certainly a litmus test for, uh, <laughs> for mid-range decks at the moment. Like, can you keep up with all this? Rogan taps for red. Yeah, but they, they didn't have a second red. This doesn't tap for red. This is too red. <laughs> Alright. Pretty good, although we may just loot this away. Let's just let's just tap this first. I feel like I just want to loot it away. Okay, and then I could cast another Mox Amber just to untap Rona. I think I think I just want to spin first. Okay, so we get to double Shredder, untap Rona. That's big. We um, we would need like another Manamo to Cauldron again this turn. I guess we I guess we could just cast that this turn. Maybe better to graveyard it anyway. Let's just graveyard it. Get a loot. Another Urza. 
which I'm I'm a little short of casting. Oh no, I can cast it. Oh, sorry, I was sorry, I can't. I was thinking for some reason I um, had these as Imri still. So I'm gonna be one short of casting this. That's probably gonna end up being okay. So let's attack with the Shredders. Yeah, I have Emery, but I don't have everything as an Emery, so I can't just cast a bunch of Mox Sapphires. It's really nice that we have all the Spell Skites, too, to protect from removal on the Cauldron. Can you win if you recast Agatha with Bliss under th underneath it? Um, the problem is I don't have... Rona, Rona is not an Emery at the moment. It's just a Rona. It is It is pretty crazy that this deck is keeping up with Double Bean, Double Leyline, Double Force, Ren and Six Besaju, Solitude, Charmall. You know, they, they did they did miss out like a pretty crucial land drop, but then they forced the Vigard Ren and Six to me, you know. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about it. Not, not that we're going to win this every time. Okay, so let's spell Skite, I suppose. You had Imri untapped in two mana? Yeah, how does that cast Urza? What am I missing? We need four to cast Urza. Imri untapped two mana. Imri can get us a third mana. Maybe that's not what you're saying. What if they had a ring? I mean, there are situations we could lose, but... They, are, they sure are, if, it sure does feel like they're doing the thing and we're doing all right anyways. They're talking about casting Cauldron, I see. You had Emery untapped in two mana. Yeah, but how do I turn Rona into an Emery to combo there? We can't. Unless unless I'm misunderstanding what like what line you want me to take. Um, I got, oh, you wanted me to just turn, the, they're just dead if I just turn these into Ballistas, I see. Yeah, maybe that was the line. Yeah, so I guess if they target the cauldron, we just let it go since we can just Emery cauldron again. Although then we can't spell skite the fury triggers at all. Yeah, the cauldron was tapped, but I could have cast the second cauldron and just blisted them. What a game. This is that come to me in a dream? <laughs> Might as well have. I, you know, it was. It took. It took a few days to get here. I had a few days and a lot of like worse drafts that were really different. Four damage on the Emery, so let's spell skite that. You guys don't like Fury? Just ha just turn your four six Ledger Shredders into spell skites, and then Fury doesn't do anything, dude. <laughs> I guess it still draws two cards. How far am I from mixing this with Kethis? I mean, Kethis is completely different. I, at some point, maybe we'll work on Kethis. I know, I, I, it sure doesn't seem like anybody wants to. <laughs> wow, I, we, we really just gotta take a moment, y'all. Like, my opponent didn't have, like, the best draw possible, but to be, like, an artifact-focused deck and beat Double Bean, <laughs> Double Bean, Double Solitude, Fury, Charmall, Double Force of Vigor, Prismatic Ending, Ridden Six Besage, Double, Triple Binding, it, like that that's that is certainly that is certainly an accomplishment. <laughs> that is certainly an accomplishment. In the Bowmaster world, worse, but uh thankfully we have a lot of ballistas too. Uh ping bowmasters. Can't they put one damage on each shredder and prevent redirects? Uh it's okay, I think they're still dead. <laughs> but yeah, they 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 should have done that. This Rona lives, they're so fucked. Oh, a little more four color, maybe. Okay. Fine with that. Do we discard Ballista first? I might just cast uh, Urza next turn. Might also be fine to 
No, I'm just gonna do this now. I mean, they they play some number of lightning bolts. I, I, I'm okay if they get another land. The next turn, like I I want my cauldron to live really badly, and then we can go like shredder, spell skite. Then our shredder is a ballista. Um. But then if they if they get rid of the cauldron, then we can just slam Urza. Togo, thank you for the raid. Hope you're doing well today. We're having a pretty pretty interesting go of it ourselves. Okay, so let me ping the Teferi. Rona bounced. Drawing a zero drop would make things kind of interesting here. Do I think Cauldron's gonna enable this many Cauldrons? No. <laughs> Cauldron has been a lot better than I expected it to be. Yeah, I think I just wanna go Shredder, Rona. See what we see. I probably discard Spell Skite. Wow, we do. Okay, we drew a zero. So I guess now we discard Urza. Oh, we can't. Sorry, we can't. Um, I was thinking I could tap this for for mana and for and for the Urza. We can only do one. So I guess I should have done the Spell Skite, huh? Do I save this for Ledger Shredder loot? That seems okay. Um, seems okay. Uh, we've already done Gristlebrand Cauldron. It was okay. Like the the problem is like you have Gristlebrand in your deck and you have to put it in the graveyard. Then you have to then you have to have a creature in play. It's it's like really the same as just Goryozing. It you know it's just not a particularly different dynamic. Okay, so they're going after the creatures pretty aggressively. So we go Shredder, Orny. Okay, so we can... Oh, we can't anymore put a counter on something because we tapped the cauldron. We can actually, we can untap the cauldron, though. Um, we can untap cauldron and then exile their, like, flooded strand. Okay, resolves. Could be good to loot it away and turn our creatures into spell skites. Bummer. Pretty good draw from them. Probably dead. Um, we did just 204 color, but yeah, not always gonna do that, I guess. They had six cards in their hand, too. <laughs> We'll play it out though. If our Emery lives, we have Emery plus Benamo. Like we're just kind of immediately back into it. They've also ridden six every turn, so a good chunk of their hand is probably lands. They they also have the Besaju, which is a problem. But uh, Dol and Maroth is our Benamo. We have two of them. They they should be in there. Thought about ring or splash to spray. My ring is in the sideboard. Obviously, I, I've, I've I've thought about putting ring in the deck. <laughs> I considered it. <laughs> uh, I you can splash for haywire might. At the moment, I don't know how important it is, and I think having like all island mana base is really nice against blood moon. And we'll see. Obviously, yeah. Obviously, first draft. Interesting they bounced that and not the Saga. I guess they're just going to besage you the Saga. We're probably getting pretty close to go to get two. It, it is also nice that you just have, like, kind of almost infinite basics for for besage you. Oh, wait, they played besage you. What the fuck? They, they didn't have another one, do they? Um, yeah, we played it out this far. Yeah, maybe this quick. 
Yeah, I guess they should have attacked Ornithopter last turn, huh? Oh, we're dead. I guess maybe get to loot into something here. Where's the grinding station? That's what I like about this deck is you don't need freaking grinding station in your deck. You don't need Breach. I mean, Breach is a good card, but it is kind of slow. You're just like a, a you know mid-range affinity deck that, that is very hard to interact with, has a ton of value, and then is also has this infinite combo it can ha you know get access to in some games. Oh boy, come on, spell! Yeah, baby! Man, it would be cool to win this game. So we're getting like Aether Spell Bomb here. Stone. I think Aether Spell Bomb. Uh oh. Boo. I guess this is was always going to be a tough game to win, huh? Can we play Narset Silver Rings? Not in this deck. <laughs> I don't know. Like, we, I don't know. We just came back from a game where we like outgrinded four colors. It's not gonna happen all the time, but Ring has a lot more synergy in this deck. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna concede. Let's go to game two. Let's go. To, let's, let's, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. on the play this was our sideboard plan last time seemed like it was okay we also bring in the emrakul and try to urza into it i was thinking i wanted to do that against blue white i'm not sure if i want to do it here i i don't want more than one needle what do we end up cutting maybe like just trim a mox amber seems okay it's not going to combo that often. Emrakul is bad to discard. It's not that bad to discard. Like, uh, it depends on like how managed your graveyard is. But if you have your whole engine in, in hand and like the, you just like don't loot it away, I think it's okay. Sand sick. Like, the, I mean, if we've already cauldroned our good card from the graveyard, it's not that bad to, to shuffle. Emrakul is bad versus solitude and binding. I don't know. It's is it bad against them, or do you like just take an extra turn and then they solitude binding it, and um, you know you're you still get to keep spinning your Urzas. I don't know. Maybe it is. Let's try it. I think I think it's important to be trying trying uh, plans this early into a brew. I, I I really like this too. Like just like it, the fact that it's good to discard Urza here is kind of exciting to me for some reason. Okay, deck tech for Pi. Blue black Urza. Looks really cool. Give me a second, I'll get, I need to chew on it a bit. Am I discarding a second Urza here? I kind of think so. I'm going to go Emery Cauldron. Emery Cauldron. Uh, counter Urza. 
into second shredder probably. I need the bobble to do that, I guess. Seems okay. Seems okay. I know they have Fury in their hand too, so maybe I might like to put the counter on the Emery to make it a bit harder to kill. Although it's not really going to be much different since they're just going to kill the Emery anyways. But so maybe maybe, maybe that's an argument for counter on the Thopter. Not really sure. That was a sick turn. Your deck looks cool, Pie. Um, I think it's like a very good first draft from what I can tell. I don't really have a lot of um, a lot of feedback other than I, I would I would think I would play at least twenty two lands. This this is always like the big problem I think that the the Thopter Sword Foundry deck has is like it's just so easy to skimp on lands, but you really have a hard time doing it. Let's see. So I would really like to uh, Cauldron Spell Skite's ability. So what if we just start off spinning? Um, I think tapping the bobble's fine for now. Hmm. So we'll cast this mostly for the connive. Yeah, turning everything into an Emery sounds pretty reasonable. Then we can needle the ring. Okay, needle the one ring. Cauldron, spell sky, counter. Pass back. I'm just doing a deck tech in between this. Oh, you're also only playing three sagas. Yeah, I think we could get the fourth dispute for a land. I think you cut the main deck spell skite for a land. I kind of want to play 23, honestly. You have so many four drops, and like you really you really need to curve out. Like 23 is even like it's not as high as it could be. Cyber looks pretty good too. I yeah, I think I want to cut a dispute for a land. You could also play the fourth talisman instead of one of these lands if you really wanted to. You could cut the second chromatic star, maybe. Yeah, they have no they have a ring in play, no attacks needed. I think Peregrine took Confectioner as a viable combo deck. Yeah, we, we've been playing. Uh, we've been playing the combo, and it's been pretty good. So we're gonna bounce the Cauldron. Let's go ahead and spell skite that. So I'm gonna tap the needle for a blue. Change the target this ability. <laughs> the little order. Look at this order. Look at all these abilities on this Ornithopter, dude. Star seems important to have sec fire to student bargain. I mean, you have, you still have one off Sir Urza Saga. I don't know. I don't know. That's the pro That's the problem with the Thopter Sword deck is like it's just so hard to like get you to get the number of lands up. But that that, that that's that's why all the Thopter Sword lists have too few lands is because the deck needs to, like all of these like fucking bullets and tutor targets and actual spells that do things. Um, I I do acknowledge that. Okay, I'm actually gonna not. I'm gonna be off the Urza plan. I am uh. Not feeling it anymore. I think we're just gonna be on back on fourth opters. Yeah, this deck is so sick. Maybe I do want the second needle. It's a little bit weird. It's a bit weird in this matchup. I just don't want to draw it that often, but and like they're they're like really killable too. They like it's just like just not that good against them. No, not like this, dude. Okay, my opponent's also to mold a six. Do I have to go to five? Can I ever keep this? It's pretty good if we draw a land. It's a hard matchup to mulligan in. We have the Mishra's Bobble as like an extra look at a land. I'm like talking myself into it. I'm talking myself into it. We draw blue stars, get to go turn one Urza. We just don't have that many Mold of Fives that beat four color. Do you get the 15 mana cast Dimmer Cool? Sometimes. You also spin into it off Urza sometimes. This is kind of. You kind of test the idea of thinking testing it. I think on the draw, it's like. It's just so bad to like have it in your hand on the draw where you like really need to be putting cards in play. All right, miss on look number one here.
It's okay, Island. You don't even have to come here off the bubble. No! Gemstone Caverns. Fuck. It's okay. Like, we also can get Springleaf Drum off the Saga. I don't, it's it's going to likely be a little slow. But, I mean, Cauldron next turn, like, st stops them from Ren and Sixing. It's not the end of the world. We hit our land drop, at least. Could we play a Thopter this turn? It's okay. It's kind of good to add to play there beside you, too. You don't if, if you don't need to buy the ring for this deck either. I'm not even like convinced that they are particularly important. Yeah, I should play an Ornithopter because if I get Drum, I can go Shredder then then play a spell. Get the Connive. Yeah, that was that was a bit of a pawn time. So I guess now I'm just playing Emery instead. And hoping for the best. Mill two lands. They find another fetch land. Got any use of excellent creatures put on scrape your net? Not today, but we have <clears throat> we have in some other cauldron decks. I'm like super sniffly today, my allergies are coming in bad. Oh no, no, my standing desk is just got unplugged again. Yeah, I thought about Unctis. I had it in some drafts. The problem is, like, its activated ability just doesn't really matter to give to other creatures. Let me try to identify where it's unplugged. Oh, which is good news. Figure it out later. It's going to take a lot to win this game. But it doesn't seem like their their hand last turn was like that crazy. They're drawing into planes. Pretty impossible for them to have nothing though since they um, had to play Visejo as a land. Alright, down to 17. This Rimblem is scary. Everything's scary, huh? There is, like... It's just it's just so tough for them to be, like, really flooded here. And we can't win unless they're really flooded, unfortunately. Like, I'm trying to, like, envision how it's even possible. But, like, the fact that they, they had to play Visage in turn 2. And they drew planes, which means they didn't have, like, planes. So they couldn't cast... Like, a land that couldn't cast your end. Probably bounce Rona instead of Emery, right? Black Stuff of Waterdeep as a Saga target have any merit? Well, one, it's not a Saga target. You can't get it off Saga because it costs a blue, not a generic mana. But it, that card also sucks. Alright, let's take it. If we draw Cauldron, maybe like Rip. No. The problem is we like trimmed a box amber. So it's it's gonna be very difficult to find to find Mox Amber. We're so or we are a Mox Amber away from comboing, but Yeah. There's only one more in the deck. We have to do this though. Why do I- why am I, like, actually believing I could win this game? Could even- but, uh, Imagine drawing the mocks there. I 
They have to break so bad, dude. I did wish for a cauldron. Got a cauldron. Got three cauldrons. Rono loot a May. Well, you have to tap it to activate it, so I don't I don't think it's a May, but you don't have to tap it, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, they have bean stocks we lose. Another ring? They don't have a binding. What the fuck is their hand, dude? If we find her, if we find her second mox, no fucking way. We even have spell scared up. No fucking way. Okay, hold on though. We don't have spell scared up because we have to call in the Emery. Now we have it up. Now we have it up. Now we have it up. This, if I win this game, it'll be, it'll be the most ridiculous, like. I, I don't think I've ever been so far behind and won a game before I, in my entire career. And their F6 we win. I, I even have spell scape protection up because I can untap the Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Activate Emory target spell sky before we cast the Amber. I guess I guess that's maybe the better thing to cast. But I was just I was just going to actually we don't we don't want to get we actually don't want the spell sky to go out of the graveyard. Does that that make sense? Okay, so let me just show them the ballista, so they can concede if they want. It's a lot more clicks for me to do it this way, but um. I think usually you get to save time by showing them the blister. There's a good chance of just figuring out how the combo works. Imagine winning this game. What the hell? Never give up, never surrender. Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not auto yielding to anything. I need to be able to Benamo in response. I am not, I'm not auto yielding to anything. Just enjoying the moment. I explained, explained I was going to activate Bliss a lot, ping them in their upkeep, they pack it in. Let's go! I have never in my... Whoa! <laughs> never give up. Never surrender, dude. Never give up. Never surrender. Sometimes they just got seven lands in their hand. <laughs> Sometimes... They just have seven lands in their hand. How do they have seven lands? They played Besage you on turn two. They played Besage you turn two. Man, we, they had to get. They had to get. The, we had to draw perfectly, and they had to draw seven lands. <laughs> and that's that's what happened. character but if you're offering me a permanent plus one to a stat you can do whatever the fuck you want <laughs> seems like an argument for ring of the Mang. yeah you, you could play ring of the Mang. this is very very much draft one and you know for for the most part i'm thinking that ring is a tool that i want access to in like those kinds of matchups but we're also really good at grinding without the ring and i think we've got mana curve considerations we have synergy considerations to keep in mind tarot 17 months um, yeah, I didn't make out with any squids. Yeah, I did, I did beat the game, though. I did finish my first playthrough. 
Um, I started a multiplayer playthrough with some friends um, that is on hold because one of my friends just had a baby yesterday, which is very exciting. Um, the guy's going to be the best man at my wedding. Very exciting. And then me and Esther have also started like a two-player split-screen playthrough. Hmm. Going to be tough to raise. We'll see what happens. A spell skill can help uh, against like their haste land at least. I guess just discard the ballista. Can cauldron it back. Uh, yeah, split screen playthrough of Baldur's Gate three. It's been it's been fun so far. I'm just like letting us to do everything, and I'm just playing like a himbo who's helping her out. A deck that seems to be great in paper, nightmare to play a magical line. I maybe maybe a nightmare to play on both. I don't know. Nightmare is subjective, I suppose. Bog is uh certainly relevant here. Titan's got to be a really bad matchup. Sometimes we'll play a bunch of Ashiox in the sideboard if Titan's popular in these kind of decks. Get a connive. Yeah, I kind of need all the other cards, I guess. Yeah, I'm playing a Wood Elf Paladin with Esther, and she's playing. I I I don't even I don't know what like race Esther is in, in her her character. She she like got so deep. Her her skin's her character's got like pink skin and. Uh, she's maybe some kind... She's a half-elf, I think, but <laughs> she got real deep with the character creator. Um, but she's a, she's playing a bard. But Esther's so funny. She does this every single time we play, uh, like, D&D &D or we play we play any, um, any TTPRG or anything. She's just, like... She always picks a class, like, bard or, like, you know, like... She picks, like, a roleplay focus, like, charisma high class... And then she's like, I'm not doing any damage, dude. What I love I love to do damage, and I'm not doing any damage. <laughs> she does this every time. It's so funny. She's like, why am I dealing no damage? <laughs> but I'm I'm trying I'm I'm trying to figure out how we can get get the damage up. Where she's only like level like two right now. <laughs> but it, it's it's also good to be like a bard and like you have something like dialogue options it's fun bard war like yeah we can maybe figure out like a good multi-class i've one 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 character i like to play in D, &D I, don't, I haven't played it in baldur's gate but one character i like to play in D, D is a bard that takes two levels of paladin and you just like you you just like smite and punch and you basically just play all might and you like talk about how crazy your punch is going to be and you sink like a level four spell slot into your punch not like a very like <laughs> mid maxi build, but like a very fun one to you know to play. What are they doing over there? I guess they just don't have a Titan. Yeah, they got Teleri West. That's good news. <laughs> okay, probably gonna cast that. Probably getting Aether Spell Bomb. Bounce Dried, replay Aether Spell Bomb off the Emery, I guess. Not that bouncing it does that much. Let's see, so I have I have enough to I have enough to also make a saga token, right? Here we go. Top for blue. Bounce. Aether spell bomb. Tap for blue. Replay. Maybe this gets bigger. It does get bigger. Attack for five. And then we we can still make a construct and activate spell bomb and can spell skite the haste potentially. Oh, this is like plan B is being a scary Urza deck. I think being a scary Urza deck is really plan A. But like Cauldron just Cauldron even when you're not comboing has a ton of value. Turning everything into a ballista. Turning Ledger Shredder into ballista specifically has been really crazy. Um, and, and, you know, I will say this. Like, Ledger Shredder stock has gone way down because of Orcish Bowmaster. If your Ledger Shredder is a walking ballista, you are not as scared of, of Orcish Bowmaster. 
Yeah, just, yeah, finally getting Shredder back on the team. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I was so excited for today's deck. I like woke up kind of groggy. Uh, I stayed up, I stayed up kind of late with Esther watching the new Ahsoka episode, which is Ahsoka's been a really good show, by the way. I've, I've been enjoying that a lot. Um, we stayed up kind of late, and then I woke up a little groggy. I'm like, wait, I built this deck yesterday, <laughs> and I immediately woke up. Yeah, last night's episode was great. I feel like every episode has gotten better, and not not like not, not, not like the first couple episodes were weak, but it's been it's been getting good, dude. I I also like I didn't watch any of the animated shows or anything, but um, despite like despite the whole show being like you know a rebels or and Clone Wars reference, I'm I'm enjoying it a lot. I guess I might sack the stone to draw. I mean, I guess I, I also just have him dead. I don't need to be doing all this. I want to get my Kanai. I want to grow my constructs. But bounce right and instep. There's no reason to bounce right and instep because you're just going to tap the Aether spell bomb to bounce. It's going to be exactly the same resource commitment at any point in the turn cycle. Um. So you might as well just have full information before you commit to use that resource, if that makes sense. Okay, huge that we won game one in a matchup that seems incredibly bad. Um, yeah, people always say it's worth watching Rebels. I don't know. I, there's a lot of stuff that's worth it to watch. I, I may just, like, watch a recap of it. I, I'll say this. I really do not like the animation style of these, like, Clone Wars shows. They just... It just looks... So goofy to me. Could bring in the ring. I don't know. They just kill my creature with Valakut, I guess, if I do that. Needle's not good against them, really. I could bring in one as a YOLO. Yeah, you can't ceremonious rejection pact. I guess you can rejection ring. I might, I might play rejections on the play. You can counter, counter amulet is big, counter ring is big. You don't like Clone Wars animation? No, it looks like... Y'all, like... What is this, dude? I don't know. They just look so goofy to me. They're, the faces are, like, so blocky. It's, like, 2002, like, CGI. I don't know. I, it's just, just, I, it doesn't maybe look as bad as I remember. Like, like, like look at Yoda. He just looks so goofy to me. I don't know, that's okay. Slayers, T West, their ring, Slayer, I don't know. It's not like we have like a lot of good cards. You just have to get over it. I don't know. I can just like watch a recap video and then like watch the shows that look good. You get used to it. I don't maybe maybe you get used to it. I, I acknowledge that maybe you get used to it. I also I also I don't know. I my, my siblings are really into it too. They they've they've been trying to get me to watch it for years and I've been hesitant. Hmm. Well, we're pretty dead. Look how crazy our turn it one is. <laughs> Theirs is better though. I I'll just like I, I I might watch a recap, but I I don't know that I even need it at this point. Like I kind of I think I kind of get it. Okay, we'll name Teleri West. Name Teleri West, hope for the best. All the Asuka stuff has a lot more weight with her arc in the Clone Wars. I'm sure, I, I'm sure. I, I, I'm loosely aware of the character. I saw the animated Clone Wars movie when it came out in theaters, and it was awful <laughs> i was so excited there was a new star wars movie in theaters and the clone wars movie was so bad it was so bad uh <laughs> I don't know, i'm i'm i i, I uh, my siblings also they tell me about the show they, they tell me about the stuff that happens and i <laughs> 
<laughs> they also don't have double green here. But watch Ahsoka. Ahsoka, Ahsoka is a really good show. Okay, they got a they got a ring. Doesn't seem like they necessarily have a Titan at the moment. They could have cast it. They maybe are still going to cast it and they want like protection. Oh, we're still we're still going. The new circus on Disney Plus. That's what we're that's what we're talking about. I've been watching it. I've been really liking it, despite like not watching the animated shows, which they reference a bunch. But it's it's been really good. Like everything about the show is good. The the casting, the acting, the writing, the set design, the costuming, the CGI, the 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 writing. I guess I already said writing. The dialogue. I'm just like I'm liking everything about the show, which is. Like I've I've enjoyed like the other like Star Wars shows. I haven't seen all of them. Um um but like I I I, I even like really like I haven't seen the third season of Mandalorian. But I liked the first two. Boba Fett was so was mid. Obi-Wan was like really hot and cold. Uh I didn't finish Nandor, although every or Andor. <laughs> Everyone's like Andor is the best show ever. All right, let's get these stupid sp I mean it, it's not completely irrelevant, but it ain't Completely relevant either, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, need to get the caves out. Need to get the caves out. Too late. I'm sure, I'm sure Andor gets better, but I, I I was I was honestly like a little a little bored. I mean, saying just can't win, so let's mull again. I I'll, I will give Andor another chance. I don't I don't really even remember why I thought it was boring, but I I did think it was boring. I'm sorry. I know this is heresy. I know everyone loves Andor. I'm sure I'm I'm sure it gets really good. I gave it like four episodes, and I was pretty dang bored. You only think Ahsoka's writing is good because you haven't seen Andor. It's really it's really bad, actually. I don't, what do you mean it's bad? <laughs> I don't know. It's not like genius level. It's not like the best writing I've ever seen, but it's good. I'm enjoying it. Okay, I guess we're gonna go for Rona here. Try to combo. Need to find an Emery. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure Andor is awesome. I will give it another chance. But Ahsoka, Ahsoka for, but again, these shows are like mostly fun and like, like basically all of them do some things well and like they they miss the mark on some points. But for me, for me, Ahsoka has just been a hit on like every. Whoa. Okay. So we need to find a second Mamber. Okay, it's probably good to go dis if I discard the island, I get a lot more looks at it. So let's go Cauldron. Oh wait, sorry. I, I was thinking I would be casting Emery. We, have, we do have to discard the Emery. So I could have also Shreddered. So we get so next turn we can combo. Since we get the since we get the um, and I guess I should because we get the other Mox Amber. I guess I should probably put a counter here now, just in case they have graveyard hate. So if we played Saga turn one, we also would have won. Genetic with six months. Thank you. We don't have a payoff right now. Um. It should be like really easy to to find one. We get the Ledger Shredder Connive. We also we also no the, just it just you just like get to loot infinite with Ronard, right? Wait, we don't need this. We don't need the stone actually because we just get to loot with Rona. Oh, not infinite though, because you have to you have to tap to replay. Never mind, never mind. But it's we should be okay. Yeah, we can also turn Shredder into an Emery, which doesn't do everything, but something. Do you ever flip Rona? Uh, we haven't flipped it today. I'm sure it'll happen sometimes. I, I, I had a build that was, like, trying to, like, cast Emrakul sometimes, either with Urza Spins, um, giant um, Everflowing Chalices, and or, like, pinging Rona with Ballista. There's just too many moving pieces. Too fragile. 
this Rona Emery combo is Pioneer playable. Well, Ballista is Ballista is not legal in Pioneer, which makes it a lot harder. Um, you have a, you have Ornithopter. You don't have Bobble. I guess that's fine. You do have Ledger Shredder. So like, so what is the so how do so you have you have Stone for the draw? You have Stone for the draw. What's the what's the payoff though? Because our win condition here is Ballista. It's easy peasy. You don't have that in Pioneer though. But you could maybe you could maybe work on it. Yeah, you don't have Urza. I mean, you don't, Urza's not like, uh, you know, the the most important thing. Okay, so I will flow to mana, flow to mana. Get a another member. Keep this one. So let's start off. Get our connives. Okay, there we go. We, there, now we win. Well, we don't win now, actually. We win in a long time from now, but we do win. <laughs> uh, we will eventually be able to make a big enough ballista to kill them on their turn. How do you do for Blister Urza? Yeah, Urza. Our opponent gives us the GGs, and we are 4 and 0 oh with our first. First draft of the deck. Been very powerful so far. Don't see why you couldn't blitz on ring. There's a they pro everything, is why. Alright, let's get a trophy prediction. Turn it into an Emery. Ooh, we're on the draw with the caverns. Yes, please. When you turn your Rona into an Emery, uh double mox amber is infinite mana. King with the six, they think you will come back. Titan shift, maybe. Looks like it. We did not get lucky enough to draw a zero for the turn one Emery. So we'll bring in the rings. Pro everything is probably nice in this matchup. To say the least. Don't think the saga tokens matter very much. Got an emery down. Nice to find a cauldron. We do find a cauldron. Did I find this combo? We we played against a um I, I'm sorry, parole. It was Parole MTG who was in the chat earlier today. We played against uh, them who was playing a a breach deck with the with the Rona combo. Um, um, and it was very cool and it was definitely something that was interesting. This deck is, you know, certainly, you know, a different, you know, it's, it's the, the theory is like, you just get to be a value deck and you're not playing a lot of like fragile combo cards. Your deck's a little bit more cohesive, but it was not something I found by myself. Okay. So there's a Rona. I can maybe combo next turn. Uh, Spell Skype could be. Could be a key piece of a puzzle to keep me alive here. I have four mana. Is there any way I can discard the Urza and use it use Cauldron on it? It doesn't really seem like there's a way to do that. The problem is I, I really I really need to play Rona this turn. I really need to play Rona this turn. Yeah, so I think I think I just go Cauldron. Cauldron, Rona, and then I'll exile the Spell Skite to the Cauldron to have the Spell Skite ability up. You can cast Urza, then Rona. Yeah, but 
I think I, I can do that, yeah, but I think I I think having the spell sky up is better than having the Urza here. Do we have a cookbook? I don't have a cookbook. I don't think you want a cookbook. Got three cards in their hand. Don't think we're dead to landscape shift, right? Nerd death. Thank you for the 10 months. Hope you're doing well today. Because landscape shift is 18. I'm at 20. Which is the, and then I also have the ballista. It's like reduce every Valka trigger by one. All right, so let's just go ahead and just put a counter on the Rona to keep it alive here. Don't need to do anything else. I can also um, use my Ballistic counters to kill my Emery, or although I guess I just have second Emery in hand to Legend Rule, because I, I do I need to turn my Rona into an Emery. Yeah, yeah, Doom. A lot of this combo is Pioneer legal. You might want to take a crack at it. Uh, maybe, maybe we can. Certainly the best Emery deck I've played in a while. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Valka triggers are basically all two, then three, but they only have 18 damage this turn anyways. Are they going to escape shift? They ring. They are escape shifting. They just get another Valka. Well, they can't... Well, no, if they get another Valka, they're not dealing any damage. 21 with the land trigger before the escape shift. I thought it was 18. I'm not the pioneer guy anymore, but yeah, but you're a pi you don't play pioneer at all anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Thought you might like to play some pioneer. It's okay. You don't have to. It's a suggestion. This is kind of crazy that we just get to spell sky all of these. It's a little bit of a headache. So spell sky this one. Spell sky this one. So let's get this one. That one's already targeting the Blista. Spell skate this one. Spell skate this one. And then ping them, I guess. Sure. Hopefully, I didn't fuck this up. Nope. Man, to play a good spell sky deck is also pretty exciting. Okay, so we do need to find another Mox Amber. So I'm going to start off by looting, probably looting Urza away here. So I can Cauldron it, potentially. Then we play an Emery on top of Rona, see if we mill over another Mox Amber. And then we have Emery in the yard for Rona. We did not find the second Mox Amber yet. I also have the this here, which helps me untap. Keep going. Um... Yeah, so we should have a pretty free loot here. Shredder. Um, so now what? Now maybe... Maybe we can't combo. You get a free Bobble of Emery first. Free Bobble of Emery? What are you talking about? I, this is, I still have the same Emery that I haven't tapped yet. Dot, free Bobble of Emery dot dot dot. <laughs> it's, better to, it's better to loot than cast a Bobble. <laughs> I did, but one was summoning sick and one wasn't summoning sick. I always get so triggered by the dot dot dot. <laughs> Another Emery on top. Okay, this... I think is worth trying to draw. So it's, it's a little bit weird. So I can untap it with my Minamo. Untap the Rona with my Minamo. Draw the Emery, cast the Emery. Which untaps the Rona. And if I mill if I mill over another Mox Amber, I win. If I don't mill over another Mox Amber, I can just turn my Emery into a spell skite, which protects my Rona for a turn, maybe, but I'm like dead if they have a scape shift, but this is still the best way to play around the scape shift. Yeah, so we have four more looks at a Mox Amber for the win. And we found it, awesome. So now we go Exile Emery, turn Rona into Emery. 
and we activate the click machine. Yeah, they also, yeah, they might have a hard time scape shifting a second time. Not that it matters at this point. And they know the combo! Let's go! Oh, man. Let's freaking go, dude. That was a cool turn. It's very cool that we <laughs> that like they, they like escape shifted and they just killed my ballista. Wow. Still probably a pretty scary matchup. Okay, def I want the rings. I'm starting to think you don't need the stone. I don't know. We'll 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 keep it in for a bit. It's not like a bad card in the metagame anyways. Probably okay to cut the spell bomb too. Can bring in a needle for Ren and Six. It's not like amazing. Might just leave it at home. I doubt to cut an Urza for a needle. Did I have lethal that turn? Yeah, I, I had lethal that turn. I, I was going to be able to, I, I believe. Um, uh, yeah, I make I make infinite mana, then I just cast the blister for my graveyard with the with my Rona. Um, so that's kind of slow. Let's small again. Okay, this hand's fast. Let's keep. I think I put back the Ballista. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this hand's not great, but... I draw, like, a Ledger Shredder. Emery were okay. Needle looking a bit better. So I'll fit. I've been working on Fiddlebender Cauldron. Not getting very far with it. I'm gonna try and... Is this combo or just value? Can't find the combo? Did you, I mean, you must have just tuned in. I, I I killed my opponent with the combo last game. But that was, yeah, you could, it's okay. Would I consider one Academy Ruins? Like, so that card's just so bad, I don't know. I've just, like, never seen it be relevant. Psy, I, Psy Master Thopters is also one of these cards I, I tend to dislike. It's a card that's like always suggested for decks like this, and I, it, it's like almost never good. I don't know. It does have an activated ability. It, 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 so, sometimes I like dismiss cards like this that have been really bad in older variants of this of, of an archetype, and it is like maybe like really the time for it. But I've never seen that card be good. Yes, they can kill my board and pro probably have to go to game three. Oh, targeting me? Oh, they have escape shift. Okay, turn four kill. Game three on the play. Awesome kings, very cool. All right, on the play. Hopefully our hand's a bit better for game three. Could maybe go to five. Don't it could have maybe kept my seven. I, I don't think keeping the seven was winning there. This hand, this hand is better. This hand is turn one Emery, turn two Cauldron with Manamo. Oh, sorry, Dahl Emroth. We didn't. We milled over an Emery, which is nice. If they, can, if they like bolt my Emery turn one, I can like turn this into a new Emery, I suppose. Yeah, I kind of want to see red mana there, honestly, more than search for tomorrow. Interesting. I guess I, I guess I can still just do this, though. I could just... Sorry, exile Emery. Counter here. Cast Bobble. See a Titan. Cast Bobble. Pass back. Ledger first. I think I want to play this the cauldron instead. Getting cauldron online is you know pretty important. This also gives us a card this turn. Okay, it's kind of fine. We have another one in hand. We also could just could just replay it. Spell sky is good too. Yeah, let's go. Let's go shredder. 
cast Cauldron from hand. Maybe discard Spell Sky and use Cauldron on it. Uh, we could also Blist on zero, potentially. I think this turn we're supposed to Spell Sky. Go, my Ornithopters, go! I'm Portis Shredder. It's really fucking good in the deck, I don't know. Is it possible Glittonous Crane is better? No. <laughs> this also digs for Copper Pieces. And have you ever turned this into a Walking Ballista? <laughs> We're about to, I think. What's the reason why no Ring Main? What would you, just tell me what you would cut for Ring and then I can evaluate it. Like, there's not a card in my main deck I would want to cut for Ring is why. Urs is an interesting pickup here. <sighs> I kind of want to be like Ballista, Cauldron for Ballista this turn. So maybe we go Urza. Yeah, we don't. This is this is a new Cauldron, so we no longer everything's not an Emery anymore. Urza versus Ring. Like Urza is super important in this deck. Like turning your turning your Ornithopter into an Urza is awesome, and it's kind of hard to play a ton of four drops. And Urza's like you know, I. Like, I think Urza's maybe better than Ring in this deck, despite, you know, Ring being a better card overall. At the very least, I want to be trying... I, I always like to gravitate towards, like, playing the high synergy card for a little while before I start playing the, like, powerful card. If that makes sense. Can I just put a counter on the Rona so it doesn't die to a bolt? My creatures are flying, so no reason to ping. I should be relatively safe from a scape shift next turn or a tight next turn because of all the because of my spell skites, my mini mini spell skites. I think we do crack bobble. Well, I guess I can play. The, I can use the bobble as like a mox sapphire to pay two less life. That's maybe more relevant than drawing a card right now for ledger shredder. Can they kill next turn? I think because all of my all my creatures with a counter are a spell skite, so it seems like it'll be difficult. Spellskite, it, it, it's really nice to have a good Spellskite deck, too. Like, Spellskite's been awesome here. Urz has been awesome here. Cycle, <laughs> Cycle is good news. No, you, you can never make this a Zerta deck. Urza Saga, it means no Zerta. And we 5-0! First League 5-0. Man, what a deck. What a deck. Oh, man, this deck is so cool. I woke up so excited today. Yeah, let's run it back. And we beat Titan, we beat Four Color twice, we beat <laughs> Valakit somehow. Got pretty lucky.